Hey, Guy Kane, Zombie Apocalypse Survival Camp. This is going to be the little do-it-yourself video on our bedroll. Uh, you've probably already seen the video explaining the bedroll, showing the final product, and you've probably seen a razor sharp review of the bedroll. So here we go. We're going to try and keep it quick and simple. I'm going to go fast. Feel free to pause it and catch up. Supplies list. we got one wool blanket, a bed sheet, emergency blanket, that's your Mylar blanket, some adhesive spray, emergency sleeping bag. You could actually kind of skip that or use it instead of the emergency blanket, let you guys hack it out on your own. Uh, last, we got uh, some embroidery thread and some waterproof nylon material. We use like a Cordura type. I got it on eBay. It was $15 for a 5x7. Now, if your wool blanket, first thing you want to do is fold it uh, so it actually starts to look a little like a sleeping bag. You're just going to fold it widthwise so that you have this long piece. And you want to hold it up and make sure it's going to be actually long enough for you. Ours ended up being about 27 inches wide and about 6 feet long. So it worked out pretty good for me. Next thing you want to do is get you some sort of strips of cloth, just scrap. I happen to have some blue wool blanket scraps laying around, uh, maybe six inches in width and as long as you can get them. Fold them in half, iron them up. That's going to be your edging. You can actually buy edging at Walmart if you want to do it that way. I just did it cheap and simple. Now you're going to iron them up, fold them in half, iron them, make your edging. But keep in mind you don't want the last... Oh, foot and a half there at the top. You want to be able to peel that back and still get in it. Razor complained you couldn't get in and out of ours quite as easy as we'd like. And I left about 14 inches, 15 inches there at the top. So you may want to go with a full two feet. All right, now I used embroidery floss to sew this for a couple of reasons. One, I had some laying around. Uh, two, it's fairly large if you use the whole thing. Uh, all the strands, it's fairly large, so it's less likely to tear through the wool. I thought, that's my opinion. Talk to somebody that sews, they may tell you something different. Uh, also, it shows up really good in the photos, so you can see here. But we started with a running stitch. And a running stitch is just in and out, in and out, in and out. And you can tell you're doing it right if you get that dotted line there. You can see it's just a, it looks like a dotted line when you get all the way to the end. We're going to turn around and run back with a blanket stitch, or a whip stitch, rather. It's a whip stitch. You can see it just goes around. So you're going in from the bottom, wrap it around, and then back up through the bottom again. Wrap it around, up through the bottom, just over and over and over again. That is your whip stitch. So when you get done, you're going to have a running stitch and a whip stitch both. If you were sewing this with a machine, probably anything it would do. Sewing it by hand, I did it like this. I felt like it'd be a little stronger and less likely to tear out. All right, so once you put your edging all the way around and you get it all stitched up, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look great. Nobody's ever going to see this part, and it, we're really not being graded on neatness here, guys. You get it all done. Uh, remember to leave your gap up the top. There you can see we did about 14 to 16 inches. Probably a foot and a half would have been better. And I slid the whole thing, uh, that completed blanket portion, into my pre-made Mylar sleeping bag. Again, that'll cost you about anywhere from 10 to probably 30 or $40, depending on how you want to go. I think mine ended up being about $9 when I bought it several years ago. There's lots of different brands out there, guys. You could theoretically use it just like this. Uh, it rolled up nice and small, and it would keep the moisture out. But I took it a little bit further. I took an old bed sheet and my Mylar blanket. This one happened to be a Survive Outdoors Longer. I had a couple of those laying around. And you're going to adhere the two of them together. You want that Mylar blanket to be glued to the sheet. And the way to do that is with a good spray adhesive. There are several browns available. Most of them are going to want you to spray one side of your blanket and then spray one side of your sheet, let them get tacky, and then put them together. 
If you put them together while it's still wet, wet, or if you only spray one side, it's not going to work well. Uh, follow the directions and do it right. When you get done, you'll have a blanket, mylar blanket that's adhered to your sheet. In this case, you can see I had some holes in my sheet. It's not a giant issue because the mylar blanket's going to seal that up. Now, when you get done, lay your blanket, the blanket portion, on top of your sheet and cut around it. You probably, your sheet is much bigger than your blanket. So cut around it, get it down to the size you want. You want to leave about three inches probably on either side of that blanket all the way around. Just lay it down and cut right through it. You can cut right through that mylar without any problem. When you get done, every your blanket should be kind of framed in your sheet. Then we did the same thing with the waterproof nylon that we had. We just laid it out with the sheet, marked it off, and cut it so that they're the same size. Our sheet and our nylon blanket, or nylon ground cover rather, are going to be the same size. Here you can see we just got it kind of all laid out together, make sure everything's going to work. It's what we call dry fit. You just kind of dry fit everything. Before we sew it all up, let's make sure that everything fits right. It's going to work right. Our sheet's the same size as our ground cloth. Once you, everything's good, take your sheet and your nylon portion and sew them up. Uh, I'd recommend using a sewing machine. If you know somebody that's got one or if you know somebody knows how to sew, get them to do it. Again, you want to leave about two feet unsewn on one side at the top. That'll make it easier for you to get in and out. When you get all done, you can put your blanket back into your Mylar sleeping bag. Put your Mylar sleeping bag into your outer cover that you've just sewn up. And you got a pretty good bedroll. Alright guys, that's about it. Uh, we went ahead and had a fancy cover. I had enough material left over. My wife made a nice fancy cover for me, sewed it up. But you wouldn't have to do that. Um, like Sean McKee said, if you have an old camp chair they usually come with a nylon bag you should be able to slip this into your nylon bag for your camp chair if you have that bag laying around somewhere otherwise it's not a big deal to make one nothing else throw it into a pillowcase or something do it that way but anyway guys good luck out there be careful hope it helped bye bye